Hey everyone, my name is Will. I'm really looking forward to preaching the Word of God to you today. So grab a pen and paper, get your Bibles, and let's get ready to get into the Word. The title of my message today is Building Your Health. So let's go into the scripture. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8 says, Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in life and the life to come. You know, right now, I notice that there is a big focus on physical fitness, and I love to exercise and stay in shape. Now, I'm not the epitome of physical fitness, but I do believe that it is important to practice good physical fitness and, you know, exercising three times a week, doing some cardiovascular training. It's important to maintain your health and longevity. But sometimes we put so much focus on physical training that we neglect the spiritual and spiritual training has eternal significance. So how can we balance the two so that we don't have a deficit in one or the other? Sometimes it's good to go to the word of God and look at some examples of people who are able to do that. King David was one of them. So let's go ahead and read about King David right now in 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 1 to 2. And it reads, So David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam. Soon his brothers and all his other relatives joined him there. Then others began coming, men who were in trouble or in debt or who were just discontented, until David was a captain of about 400 men. Now, what was David doing in the cave? David was in a serious predicament. That's why he was in the cave. King Saul became jealous of David because David killed Goliath. David, you know, slayed Philistines. And he began to be, have notoriety throughout all of Israel. And King Saul became jealous, went after David, sought to kill him. So David ended up in a cave. And matter of fact, some scholars believe that David was in that cave a period of three to six months. But even though that David was in a dark time, sometimes you may be in a dark time. It may seem like you're in a dark, lonely cave facing depression. You know, it could seem that all your world is caving in. You know, David, you know, prior to this being in the cave, he was winning victories in battle. He was at the top of his game. And all of a sudden, he ends up running for all his life in a cave, the future king of Israel hiding in a cave. So maybe you're in a situation like that. How can you stay strong in a situation like David? David was in the cave for three to six months, but David during this time, he was productive. David wrote Psalm 142. David wrote Psalm 57. David wrote Psalm, was it 34? All praises to God. How is he able to praise God in a hard situation? How is he able to maintain spiritual health and be productive during a dark time? Let's find out by going into the word. But before I go into the rest of my message, I have one more story for you. You know, let me give you my background. In addition to being a pastor, um, my other profession is I'm a registered nurse and I work as an infection preventionist. So I've worked in healthcare now for almost 11 years and I really enjoy working in healthcare. Now, um, my background as a nurse, I've worked in med surgical, which is medical surgical units, and also a short time in ICU. Now, when I was in ICU one time, I can remember um, working my floor, I had two patients at the time, and everything was going smooth. I had just taken a report from the other nurse, and everything was good. You know, I was getting ready to start my night shift. And all of a sudden, you know, we have these heart monitors that monitor the patient's heartbeat. One of the patients, we heard, Dee! so you know if you're in a ICU unit and you hear, beep, that's a cold blue. So it means that the patient has gone into some type of cardiopulmonary arrest and they need intervention. Now, it's important as a nurse to follow the vital signs of your patient because the vital signs will tell you if the patient is sick. It'll tell you if the patient needs some type of medical intervention in order to survive. And sometimes time is of the essence. You need to go ahead and you need to intervene immediately. So the same way that applies to your physical health, you know, your physical health, like you may be having a heart attack and not even know it. What are the signs of a heart attack? Signs of a heart attack are, you know, you feel impending doom, crushing, uh, crushing feeling on your chest. You may feel a, a jaw, a pain in your jaw. You know, all those you know, are signs of a heart attack. So the same way that you know a signs of a heart attack or, you know, a sign that you're ill because you have a cough from a cold. You need to also be able to monitor your spiritual vital signs. And that's my first point. 
Let's talk about spiritual vital signs because those spiritual vital signs will let you know where you are spiritually. Are you healthy spiritually or do you need spiritual intervention? So let's go to Psalm chapter 19, verse 14, and it reads, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So that goes to show you that if your heart and if your spirit is aligned with God, if your heart is right with God, if you're healthy spiritually, then your actions, your words, the things that you do should align with the word of God. Now, you know that you're not spiritually healthy when your actions don't align with God's word. That indicates spiritual illness. That indicates that there's something wrong. For example, if you become like Saul and you start looking at your coworker because they've been promoted past you and you become jealous or you become envious of your neighbor or you become envious of that person um, that just got a promotion or that just bought a new house. If you are be feeling that kind of envy and that kind of jealousy, or maybe it could be unforgiveness within your life. Maybe you just can't get over what that person has done for you. You know, it may have been really, really bad what they did, but you can't get over it. Those are all symptoms of spiritual illness. And if you start to go ahead and show them in your actions, you need some help. Your actions should align with God's word. And if they don't align with God's word, that's a sign that something is wrong and that there needs to be some intervention. So I encourage you, study God's word on a daily basis and then have God search your heart. And if there's something in you that God reveals that's not right or in your speech and in your action that they don't line up with his word, you know you're in need of some spiritual help. So all of us are in need of spiritual help sometimes, but it's important to... Explore those vital signs before the monitor goes dead and you're spiritually, you find yourself spiritually dead. But you know what? Jesus, even if you are spiritually dead, Jesus can revive you. Jesus can help you. Jesus can help you make it through. But you need to not get, let yourself, if possible, get to that point where you're so sick that you can do nothing, that you're hurting, that you know, you're too sick and you're too weak to even make it to, to fellowship, that you're too sick and you're too weak to even call your fellow brother or sister to pray. You're too sick or you're too weak to go ahead and, and, and forgive. You're too sick and you're too weak to not hate. You're too sick and you're too spiritually weak to even love. Let's not let yourself get to that point because the same way you can let yourself get to the point of a heart attack because oftentimes, you know, heart attacks, especially within America, because we have a serious issue with chronic disease, you know, it happens over a period of time because of physical inactivity. It happens because we're eating too much and it happens um, because our fat and our sugar intake is too high. And over a period of time, if we keep living like that, what happens physically is you end up overweight and then you become at risk for cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, and other diseases. Why? Because we're not taking care of our health. Now, there are some people who will get sick and they've done all the right things and it's not their fault. But oftentimes, many of these issues happen to us physically because we're not paying attention to the vital signs. We're not paying attention that I gained 40 pounds over last year. We're not paying attention to the fact that, you know, um, I'm starting to be out of breath just walking up the stairs. We're not paying attention to the fact that, you know, I can't do the things that I used to. My health isn't at a healthy level anymore. And that's the same way spiritually. We become spiritual ill and we stop paying attention to the vital signs. And you, it's important just to, as important as it is to follow your spiritual, those physical vital signs on a daily basis, you also have to pay attention to your spiritual vital signs to make sure that your actions are lining up with the word of God. So what happens when your actions over a period of time, if, if you let yourself, you know, go and you're not paying attention to the action, to, to your actions and you're not paying attention, staying close to God, what happens over a period of time? You need spiritual CPR. What is CPR? 
outside in, in, in the physical world. It's cardiopulmonary resuscitation. You know, when I will oftentimes hear an asystole or, you know, somebody that, that, that died or somebody that was at the brink of death, we had to run and we tried to intervene. And we will intervene by doing comp chest compressions. As nurses, we will intervene by giving oxygen or some medication to go ahead and get that person back to a healthy baseline or alive once more. And that's the same way with us spiritually. You may find yourself to the point where you can't make it anymore, where you need spiritual resuscitation. How can you get yourself revived if you get yourself to the point where you're just spiritually too weak to, to even make it through? Well, Jesus is the cure. He's the cure for your spiritual illness. He's the cure for us that are spiritually dead in sin. Matthew chapter 9, verse 12 says, when Jesus heard this, he said, healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. So you may need Jesus because maybe you're spiritually sick today, but Jesus is here. He's here with open arms. He's here for you. Maybe you need a, a spiritual shock, a spiritual infusion of the Holy Spirit to help you to go ahead and be re-energized. If you're feeling that way today, you can go to Jesus. It's never too late. Jesus is here not just for the healthy, but he's here especially for you who are sick. And maybe you may be like I was several years ago. I was dead in sin. I was lost in my sin. And I was dead. I didn't have any sense of God in my life. I was without hope. But in Jesus, you can have hope because he's the answer. He's the answer for your depression. He's the answer for your anger. He's the answer for racism. He's the answer for jealousy. He's the answer for all those works of the flesh that are not that don't line up with the word of God. He can give you the grace and the strength to make it through those situations, just like he did for me, just like he did for my wife, just like he's done for my kids. He can do it for you, just like he helped David to make it through a dark time, three to six months in a dark, lonely cave in a dark experience. David was able to be productive. Why? Because he was close to Jesus. Jesus is close to you right now, and he can revive you if you're in a dark place and you're in need of some spiritual CPR. Jesus is the one to do that for you today. And my next point is, spiritual health directly affects your physical health. You know, both of those, there's a direct correlation between the two. You cannot have good spiritual, bad spiritual health and it not affect you on a physical basis. Psalm 14 verse 30 says this, a peaceful heart leads to a healthy body, but jealousy is like cancer in the bones. You know, if you are walking and you're walking in unforgiveness, don't you know that can cause undue stress? Undue stress. I remember I was really upset with the person and I remained upset and I'm not gonna name the person, it was years ago and God has helped me through that. But I was really upset with that person. I held unforgiveness for years. But that unforgiveness caused me stress when the other person had forgotten about it and it moved on with their life. But because of that, I was totally stressed out. And you know what? You don't have to be stressed out because of unforgiveness. Even jealousy, warning what the next person has, can cause undue stress. It can cause us to lose our work-life balance. Work is good, but if you're working too much, you're constantly working, you're constantly striving, you're constantly striving. Why? Because you want the BMW. Why? Because you want the promotion, because you want to, you're jealous of the person next to you. What good is that? What good is it to gain the whole world and lose your soul in the process? And what good is it, uh, is it to go ahead and in the act of trying to gain those things, end up too stressed out and in bad health to even enjoy them at all? There, has to be a balance between the two. You need to maintain your spiritual health because it will, in the end, affect your physical health. Many of the anxiety issues and things that we're facing right now, you know, and, and many of the physical uh, sicknesses and illnesses that we're feeling are direct manifestations of what's going on in our heart spiritually. Not all of them, sometimes, you know, uh, mental illness will happen because of, uh, of something chemical or something that's genetic and you need to get medical intervention for. But that's not what I'm talking about today. 
I'm talking about many of our mental health issues and things that we're facing right now today are because are, they're directly related to something spiritual, meaning we're stressing too much. We're stressing to the point where we can't, we're, we're anxious or we, life has gotten to the point that it seems like it's caving in on us on all four sides, from the front, from the back and from the sides. And we're depressed. We're depressed. We're depressed. Why? Because we are spiritually sick. But you know what? Like I said to you in point two, Jesus can give you the spiritual CPR that you need. And also, he's given you the, the ability to monitor those vital signs. Monitor what's going on in your life. If you're feeling jealous, if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling, you know, a little bit anxious, maybe it's time to find out what the source of those things are, you know, but I want to tell you today that you need to maintain good spiritual health. Why? Because no matter how hard you exercise, you can exercise five times a week, rest and eat well, but if you're not spiritually right, it's going to affect you physically. So I'm going to give you a couple of application right now, um, verses and the things that help you to be able to maintain that balance. So the first thing is going to be the word of God. Don't just hear, but put God's word into action. King David kept God's word close. And not only did he follow, listen to God's word, but he followed God's word within his life. And if you look at any man of faith within the word of God, they were a man or woman of faith because they put God's words into action, didn't just hear it. James chapter 1 verse 22 says, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're just fooling yourself. So putting faith into practice, putting the word of God into practice, it actually increases your joy. You know, when you submit yourself to God, you actually find yourself and what the world might think an odd way, you find yourself more at peace. Why? Because when you submit to God's will, when you submit to his word, you know, you're not fighting against your flesh anymore. You're not walking in the flesh. You're not walking in sin. Because what God wants for you by following his word is good things. We serve a good father who wants good for your life. He wants good things for you. So when you put your faith into action, you're able to go ahead and live out the goodness that God wants for you in your life. God's word is not to go ahead and prevent you from having fun. God's word is not meant to take joy from your life, but his word is there to give you more joy and to give you joy abundantly. So don't just hear the word of God, but put it into practice. Because when you put it into practice, you'll have joy and that will help you with your spiritual health. And it'll also help you with your physical health. So let's put God's word into practice today. Another thing is, an essential part, this is going to be number two, an essential part to our spiritual health is maintaining communication with God. You know, David, if you read Psalm 142, he talked to God. Psalm 52, he talked to God. All these are, are songs of praise, but it's also David's direct communication with God. When you talk to God, when you have a direct lifeline with him, a closeness with him, God is able to give you the guidance that you need to make it through all hard times. But also, when you're talking to God, God is there. His presence is there. And His presence is able to change your situation. So Luke chapter 18, verse 1 says, Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Do you feel like you're spiritually ill today? Do you feel like you losing heart? Then pray. I know it sounds simple, but pray. Talk to God about it. You can go to God about anything. It doesn't have to be a complex prayer. Simple prayer. Go to God. Talk to Him. Say, God, I'm in need of you today. You know, a few weeks ago, you know, um, I made an, an error. I was at work and I made an error. And I got down on myself about that error. I was like, wow, I, I didn't mean to make that mistake. And I really felt bad. But you know what I did? I went to God and I began to talk to him. And as I began to talk to God, God began to fill me with his grace. God began to fill me with his peace. 
God began to fill me with his love. And I had the strength that I needed to stop feeling sorry for myself and had the grace to go ahead and forgive myself for making mistakes. And it's okay. You can bring whatever it is that God you need to bring to him and God will give you the strength and advice you need to make it through it. God is close to you today, but he wants you to communicate with him. So whatever it is you're feeling right now, if you're feeling some jealousy, if you're feeling some envy, if you're feeling some depression, if you're feeling some anxiety, you can bring it to God. You can go to God today because Jesus is sitting right next to the Father and Jesus faced everything that you could ever go through. He went through. He faced it. He faced it. He was tempted, but yet he didn't give in to sin because Jesus is our ultimate example. So you can go to Jesus because he identifies, he's able to sympathize and empathize with what you're going through and he's interceding for you. But you gotta go to him, go to him today. And my last point is, allow God to check the condition of your heart daily. That's going back to those spiritual vital signs. You need to be aware of the spiritual vital sign that's going on in you. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 10 says, but I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. I give all people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. God knows you. He knows you more than you know yourself. But allow him into your heart, all of your heart. Don't close up certain areas of your heart and not let God come in. God, you can search this area, up, but not this area. I want to hold on to this thing right here. God, you can search this area, but not this area because I'm not ready to let that go. Allow God to search your heart on a daily basis. When you go to him in prayer and you communicate with him, say, God, search my heart because he's put his Holy Spirit in you. The Holy Spirit that's able to go ahead and search your innermost thoughts. So say, God. You know, I, I, Holy Spirit, come in me, search my heart. Look within me. Is there anything in me that does not align for you? And then write those things down. I guarantee you he'll reveal something to you if there's something there. So allow him to search your heart daily. Pay attention to those things that he reveals to you. Because many of those things are indicative of spiritual illness that you need to allow God to go ahead and heal and take care of within your life. So with that being said, what's in your life that you need to go ahead and let God heal? What spiritual illness are you struggling with today? Is it anxiety? Is anxiety based on, you know, because you're too stressed out over work? Is it depression? Is it depression because, you know, you're, you're just really feeling overwhelmed? What is it today? Is it anger that you're struggling with? Is it jealousy that you're struggling with? What are you struggling with today? What, are, what do you need Jesus to come in and heal? We serve a God that sympathizes with you. I go through anxiety sometimes. I get jealous sometimes. And I, go to ang I get angry at times. But you know what? I can bring it to Jesus. And today, you can bring it to Jesus also. Because Jesus is here for you. Jesus wants to make you spiritually well today. So right now, let's go before him in prayer. Dear Jesus, we bring to you those things that are hindering us, Lord, and things that are causing us to be spiritually weak and spiritually ill. We bring to you anger. We bring to you unforgiveness. We bring to you lust. We bring to you addictions. We bring to you those things that don't line up with your word. Speak the hearts right now. And I pray, Lord God, that you would help us, Lord God, to line up with your word and to be spiritually healthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to pray for one more group of people today. Maybe you're spiritually dead right now. Maybe you're separated from God. Maybe you don't have a relationship with Jesus right now. 
and you want to ask Jesus to come into your life, Jesus can take you who feel, even when you feel like you're dead in your sins, like I was several years ago, and he can turn your life around. Jesus is here for you today. He's here with arms outstretched, and all you have to do is accept him. So if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, or maybe you walked away from him and it's time to come back, you can do that today. I want to give you the opportunity. On the count of three, I want to pray for you. One, Jesus is here. Two, Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. Three, won't you open your heart today and accept Jesus? He died on the cross for your sins and he loves you. Let's pray. And if you want to accept Jesus or come back to him, repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I believe in you. Thank you for forgiving me. Come into my life and I will follow you. Let's give God a hand. If you accept the Jesus today, there's angels in heaven celebrating right now because you came back to Jesus and he's here for you. And I guarantee you, your life will never be the same. So if you accepted him for the first time, you know, you can go to mylifehouse.com forward slash Jesus and you can go ahead and let us know or let us know in the comments. And we want to get some information to help you with your walk with God. Thank you for joining us today. And let's get spiritually well and let's maintain our physical health also. God bless you and see you soon.